G'day viewers, today we're going to do the five most common problems, not problems, we won't, we'll cut that. Yep. <laughs> Alright, we'll just start rolling now, no problems. G'day viewers, today we are going to do the five most common meltdown problems, they're not problems, misconceptions that people have about Hobie hulls when they first get them, if they've never seen one before. We quite often see guys losing their minds on social media. Uh, if they've never seen a Hobie before and they've brought one home from a dealer who maybe didn't charm too much, or a second hand. Uh, so here we go. Number one, the seam. There's a seam running around the outside of every single Hobie hull. It's a mark from the two metal moulds that are clamped together to produce the boat in the first place. The boat's made like an Easter egg. The big Metal moulds are clamped together. They're full of powder, powdered plastic at first. That's then rotated and spun around while heated, and then the boat sets inside. They're pulled apart later on. The boat is one piece. If you feel on the inside of a hull, where on the underside of the seams, you can feel it's a lot smoother and it's not a joint. Okay? There's no seam at all. No seam at all. Tell him, Robbo. <laughs> no seam. No fucking seam. Right. So, one piece boat. The mark, once the boat's popped out, usually has a little bit of overrun, and the boys will go down with a knife, a sharp implement, a shank. Um, and these always look a little bit inconsistent. Depends on the boat. Varies from hull to hull. Depends on the age of the metal moulds, because they flex, blah, 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 blah. Either way, every single Hobie has a seam. There's nothing to worry about. Um, moving on. Number two, the belly button. This one gets a lot of attention on social media. There's always one bloke brings a new boat home or a second hand boat home who's never seen a Hobie before. Has a look inside the hatch, sees a blob of plastic and panics. And then there'll be two other knuckleheads chime in and tell him that the Hobie's about to explode in flames as well before Finally, somebody sensible turns up in the feed somewhere down the line and tells everyone what it is. This is it. Here, underneath the hatch of every Hobie, is a rough spot. Um, this is a belly button. There's a valve in the mould when Hobie rotate it and, and do the work to mould the boat. And it leaves a little imprint on the inside of the hull. The boys at the factory sometimes take one look at that and say, that's a bit of a rough outie. We're going to have that off. So they do a little bit of, they might grind it or shave it down if it's a little bit rough, and you'll end up with an imprint on the inside here that looks a little bit inconsistent with the rest of the boat. Every single Hobie hull has one of these. Don't worry about them, they're normal. All right, number three, the little caps underneath the bottom of the hull. Okay, switch this wheel up. So, see these little guys here with the white caps? There's actually brass fittings underneath those. Now, if it's an older hull, the little white cap might have flown off. And you might see the brass, the brass fitting underneath, or you might just be looking at these white caps. What they are is like little brass strong um, fittings used for points like handles and screw points and that sort of thing. Whenever they're put into the hull, they leave a blob of really thick plastic and, uh, on the other side, which is a strong point. So they're being used here for effect, actually for the other side of the hull. Um, they're not a point where the boat can leak, even though they look like they might be. So if I flick this one off, there it is. You might be looking at that. So that is a little brass bushing there as a fitting point. Um, it's a threaded hole, but it, it's it's brass at the very bottom. There's no hole through the inside of the boat. And on the underside of this point is a really thick blob of plastic, which has actually been placed there strategically to beef up the front of the Mirage Drive case. There is no way water can move from this side to the inside of the hull. If you feel from the inside, you can check, you can see what I mean. There's another one here. It's been put there for the mast base for the sail kit. It stops. It sits up underneath the tube with a little blob shape and it stops the mast tube from being able to skip its foot out from underneath. Either or either, again, ignore them. We all do. Forgot they were there until today. Um, actually saw some bloke mountain down about it, maybe. 
couple of weeks ago on Facebook, so they do come back to haunt me, but that's all they are. Forget about them, they're not a problem, they're normal. Number four. <laughs> Scupper holes. Okay. These is where your cart goes in underneath. These have been strengthened, sleeved. The black tube there is a threaded tube that's been wound in to the kayak hole through scupper tubes that are already existing. As they wind in, they start to cut their little bit of you know, thread magic here on the edge of the tube, and they keep doing that all the way through. Do not panic about that little mark. Stop it, leave it alone, turn the boat back over, and go fishing. There is nothing for you to worry about. This is normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mirage drive fit. So, bike on the drive. There's short arts in this boat. Anyway, your drive goes in, the body goes straight as the drive drops in. We've got a brand new boat, we're sitting in the carport, we've never seen one before, and we can't help ourselves. We have a look at it and we start shaking this. There you go. Oh no! My drive is getting shaken! In the case, I think it's going to explode in the flames. No, it's not. Stop it. They all have a little bit of play like this. It's not a problem. Once you get in the boat and you start pedalling it with the force of water on the fins, these won't move at all. The drive will just lay over. The force of everything will just push forward. You won't hear a peep out of it. Uh, nothing to worry about again. It does vary. Some have the, have the ability to move in that case a little bit more than others. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they all wobble a little bit, but... Once you're, you're putting weight on them, yeah, they ain't the, wobbling back. They just... We're done. Yeah, the forward pressure of your paddling just keeps them where it needs to be. So, that's it. Yeah. And as soon as someone takes it out on the water, they realise that's the case. Um, so, anyway, I hope that saves a few blokes from jumping onto Facebook or um, worrying about stuff they don't need to. Um, all the best.